Turn with me to the book of Hebrews, chapter 11. Again, it's good to see everybody here this morning. I hope you've come for the right reason, and that is to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 17. We've been speaking about, been in this chapter here for several Sundays, by faith. We know that faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. We also know but without, that it's impossible to please God without faith. You can't come to God without faith. It is by faith. It is not of works. It is by believing. We also know that he that comes to God must believe that God is. The song they was just singing about, No, my God's real. I know God's real. I know He's real. He's real. We must first believe that He is, verse 6, and that He is a rewarder of them who diligently seek Him. Not only is He real, but He hears my prayers and He answers my prayers. I'm nothing, I'm a nobody, yet by faith in Christ and His cross... He will hear and He will answer my prayers. So we're going to talk this morning about, in verse 17, by faith Abraham offered up. Read with me this morning, verse 17. By faith Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac, that he that had, and he that had received the promises, you see, he had received the promises of God. He had received him into his heart. He had received him into his life. Brother R.J., he just hadn't heard them, but he had received them. He believed them. He had gone to them by faith. Now, let's go on. He that had received the promises offered up. He was willing to offer up his only begotten son, of whom it was said that in Isaac shall thy seed be called. He done this in verse 19 because he was accounting that God was able to raise him up even from the dead from whence also he received him in a figure. Now flip over with me to the book of Romans. Romans chapter 4 and verse 17. <coughs> Romans 4 and 17. We read these verses either last week or week before. I want them to get down into your heart. As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations. Speaking of Abraham. Now God made him a father of many nations, but here he was willing to offer up the only way that the nations could come forth his son Isaac. And we're going to talk about this in a moment. Before him whom he believed, even God, who quickened the dead, speaking of Abraham and Sarah already being past that age that they could have children. Listen to this. You ought to mark this in your Bible. And calleth those things which be not as though they were. Oh, glory be to God. Who against hope, believed in hope, that he might become the father of many nations, according to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. And being not weak in faith. It wasn't that Abraham was some superhero. It wasn't that he was some superhuman. It was the fact that he believed God. That he trusted God. He considered not his own body now dead when he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. Father, touch your word to our heart this morning. Help me to speak just the things that are needed. Nothing more, nothing less. Lord, in myself, I can do nothing. But God, by your anointing and by your touch and by your spirit, let your word go forth and let it accomplish. Let it bring to pass the things that you send it forth to do. Lord, I'm so thankful for this word. It is alive, it is powerful, it is real. And help us to see God by faith. That's the only way that we can stand. By faith, that's the only way that we can be saved. By faith, not of works, that's the only way, Lord, that we're going to make it to heaven is by faith. 
strength in Christ and His cross. And I pray, Lord, if there's one today who is here or later listens to the ministry of the church that has not reached out by faith and received, you let this be the day that they offer themselves up unto you. In Jesus' name, amen. Isn't it a wonderful thing that God calls us to offer ourselves a living sacrifice and then He gives us the faith and He gives us the strength that we might be able to do it. He doesn't call us to do anything but that He is there to support and to give those things to us. You see, we must believe Him and when we believe Him, we will receive the promises of God and we will follow what thus saith the word of the Lord. We will walk in His paths. You see, I have a problem with people who stand and make a profession, but they have no possession. And you see no change in their life, in their attitude, in the things that they once do, they still do. There's a problem there. Because when by faith you really reach out, and you believe in the Word of God, and you believe in the things of God, by faith you have received these things, then He comes into your life, and He makes a difference in your heart, and He makes a difference in your life. He changes you. Whole things pass away, and behold, all All things become new again. By faith, Abraham was willing to offer up Isaac. The only one, the only one who was going to be able to that, that the promises of God might be fulfilled by faith, Abraham offered up Isaac. Now, why would Abraham do this? I thought about this. Why would Abraham be willing? We're going to look here in just a moment in the book of Genesis at this story. But why would Abraham be willing to offer his only son? Now, I've never been privileged to have a son or to have a daughter. I have many children, many sheep, and I feel honored and very blessed to be there. But I can just partially imagine how it would be to take a son and lay them upon an altar to be willing to give them. I mean, that, that is something that is unthinkable. It is something that is beyond imagination. Why would Abraham be willing to do this? We're going to talk in a minute. Some people say Abraham was not going to follow through. Yes, Abraham was going to follow through. And we're going to look at why I see that here in just a moment. But why would Abraham do these things? Why would he so trust God? Listen to me. Because he knowed God. My wife this week, if, if, and I don't believe she'll mind if she does, I'll catch it when I get home, but I don't believe I'll catch it. This week, she's been struggling with a lot of things. We all struggle. Pastor Doug ain't superhuman neither. I face situations, trials, I stumble, I falter. I live in the same world you live in. I deal with contractors. I might even have it a little worse than some of y'all in the same world. And then employees too. But this week she, she's been going through things for the last few months. The devil has attacked her on every hand that he could attack her. Now you might not believe God does these things. I know he does them. I know he does them. I'm so thankful that he speaks to me. She was having a difficult time that day and just right at the moment as she testified to me, right out of the moment the song that Daniela sings that God knows me and best of all, uh, that I know God and best of all, He knows me. Amen. Now she sung one this morning but it's the other song that she sings. And I came to know God. Where did I come to know Him? At the foot of Calvary. Oh, hallelujah. You see, Brother Gary, I know Him because He was willing to leave heaven and earth and to come and hang upon a cross and suffer as no man has ever suffered before. That He might save my soul. I know God loves me. 
I know God will never lead me wrong or never direct me in a wrong path. I know God and I know His ways. And I know that God brings all things good unto His people. I know that God will make ways where there seem to be no ways. Abraham had heard God speak to him many times. Brother David, he'd got along with God and there that covenant was made while he was along in the sacrifice that was before God before. And he knew God. And he knew what God was about. And he knew that God was even able to raise up Isaac from the dead if there he sacrificed him. You see, I'm glad I know God. You see, that's where the devil gets us. He gets us to get our mind on the circumstances, on the situations, on the things around us instead of focusing on God and saying, Hey, God, I know you. You've not left me. Oh, I might, you know, I, I don't feel like I feel right now all the time. Hmm? Come on. Monday morning can be a different story, can it, about our feelings. By the time that alarm clock goes off at 6 o'clock, my feelings change a whole lot. But my faith don't. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost in this house. While I'm laying there praying, God, I've got to step out in your grace or I'm not stepping out today. While I'm dreading setting a foot knowing I should be thankful that I can't set a foot on the floor. I don't walk by feelings. I walk by faith because, Brother David, I know God. I know He's already got it laid out. I know the same God that saved me is the same God, oh hallelujah, one day that I'm going to walk up to the throne and be able to praise and glorify His name and lay those crowns at His feet and cry out, Thou art worthy, oh God. I know God this morning. But as the song says, best of all, God knows me. You see, Abraham was new of God. God knew Abraham. God knew Abraham. I believe He'd done this so that Abraham's faith would be strengthened. You know things come our way so that our faith is strengthened. Amen. From faith to faith we go. I look back and I see where God's brought me from. I see where God brought me through this circumstance, brought me through this situation. And I know when I face that higher hill or that worst problem, that the same God that's brought me to this point is the same God, Sister Kay, that's going to take me all the way. He'll never leave me. He'll never forsake me. His hand will always be there. God knows me. God knows I falter. Oh, you might not. I'll be honest with you. I'll be like a whole lot of preachers on. I'll tell you, I falter, I fail, I stumble. My faith falters sometimes. Fear tries to get in my heart and tries to get in my life, but then he sins. Oh, hallelujah. He sends the Spirit of God, Brother Junior, to strengthen our faith. He sends that that we need that our faith might be strengthening God to get our eyes off the problems, to get our eyes off the ways, to get our eyes off of the circumstances and place our eyes back on Jesus Christ. Oh, hallelujah. The author and the finisher of our faith. Best of all, God knows me. Turn over with me to Genesis chapter 22. God knew Abraham and I'm glad that God knows me. Genesis 22 and verse 6. I wish we could read this whole chapter, but we won't this morning. And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it upon Isaac his son. He took the fire in his hand and a knife. And they went both of them together. And Isaac spake unto Abraham his father and said, My father, and he said, Here am I, my son. And he said, Behold the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for burnt offering? That's a good sermon right there. Where is the lamb for burnt offering? And Abraham said, My son, God will provide. Oh, that ought to be marked down in your Bible. God will provide himself a lamb for burnt offering. So went both of them 
together. I want you to think about what's on Abraham's heart. God speaks to Abraham that night before this happens. And he says, I want you to take your only son Isaac, the one who the promised seed is, that I promise through him many nations are going to come. And I want you to take him up to the mountain. Now, notice Isaac knew what worship was. He had seen his dad worship. Dads, moms, are your children used to seeing you worship? I just threw that in, didn't cost you a dime. Are they used to seeing you worship here at home? Are they used to seeing you worship? Isaac knew because he began to ask questions. He knew what was going on. There was no lamb. Everything else was there that they usually took. But there was no lamb. God spoke to Abraham and said, I want you to take him and I want you... And and if history is correct and the way that we we look at things and we see the the names and the geography is right, about the place that Abraham stretched Isaac out is where the Ark of the Covenant sat when the temple was built. And Abraham, listen to what he done. I know what I would have done. I'm human. I'd have drugged my feet. You parents are a real blessing. When kids begin to drag their feet, I don't see how your nerve stands it. I'd have drugged my feet. I wouldn't have got up early in the morning. But Abraham got up very early in the morning. Got everything ready. Got his servants. He got the fire. He was going to do it. If he wouldn't have, he'd have left something out and said, Oh, by the way, I've got up here and now I can't do it. He wasn't just acting. You see, that's the problem a lot of times is we act rather than being and having faith. Let me go on. Abraham got all these things together. He got the servants. And they go to a certain point and then listen. In verse 5, Abraham turns and he looks at the servants And he said, y'all stay here. Listen to what he says. Me and the lad are going to go yonder and worship. We're going to worship all through the day. Sunday morning ought not be the only time that you worship God. You're going to worship God all the time. Keep that spirit of worship in your heart and in your mind. Me and the lad's going to go yonder and we'll worship and listen. And we... But he didn't say I, like I probably would have. But we will return. He knew God. Best of all, God knew him. Abraham starts up one side of the mountain. Now you have to forgive my imagination. But on the other side of the mountain, might not happen this way. Just bear with me. On the other side of the mountain, I see a ram down there. Down in the valley. Abraham's getting ready to go up the mountain. That ram's down in the valley on the other side. Pastor David, I believe the Holy Ghost just touched that ram and said, Boy, the leaves on that thicket on top of the mountain are awful good. God will provide. And as they start up one side of the mountain, that ram starts up the other side of the mountain. God's already got the ram. Whatever need you're facing this week, God, oh glory be to God. God's already setting things in order. Why? Because you're His child. Because He loves you. Because, Brother Junior, He will not leave nor forsake. He's already setting things in motion. But we must believe. We're over here sitting and doubting, God, I just, I don't know how I'm going to make it. I'm, I'm there with you. I'm not mocking. I'm there with you. God, how's this going to happen? And I'm trying to work it out in my mind, and I'm, I'm trying to figure all these things out. But God already has the ram headed that way. God's already laid. Just trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. And that's what Abraham was doing. He was trusting God because he knew God. 
You see, the few short years that I live, Brother Brandon, I've come to know God. He's never led me. He's never forsaken me. I've not seen his seed begging for bread. God always makes a way where there seems to be no way. And I see as they're walking up that mountain. Now, you'll have to forgive my imagination, but I can see this lad, whether he's older or younger, looking up at his dad with those brown Jewish eyes. And he looks at him and he says, Father... Now, if this wouldn't have made a lump come up in your throat, tell me what would have had. And he said, Father, I see the wood. I, I see the knife. I see everything. I see the fire. I see everything that is needed for a sacrifice. But where's the lamb? Where's the lamb? I see as Abraham looked down by faith. He didn't know that ram was skipping up the other side of the mountain. He didn't know God was going to speak out from the heavens and tell him to stop. He believed God. Whatever God brought to pass that Isaac and him was going to go back down that mountain, however it was, he believed God. And he looked at Isaac and he said, Son, my God. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost in this house. Brother Gary, ain't you glad you can say, My God. I know Him personally. But best of all, Brother Junior, He knows me. Glory to God. He said, Son, God will provide. And they start on. I see as they come on, you can believe it. However, we're not told a whole lot of details right here. You can believe that Isaac struggled. I don't believe that he did. You can ask him when you get there. I've got a lot of other more important things I want to do when I get there. But Isaac was laid up on the altar, was bound there upon the altar, the wood and everything ready for the sacrifice. And Abraham raises, takes the knife. Can you imagine this faith that this man had in God? But he knew God. You see, there we would have so much more faith if we would realize we know God. We know God. You have an expected end. Do you remember that? You have an expected end. God has an expected end for you. He knows. He has it all ready. If you'll believe him. Abraham takes that knife and he raises it and the Lord speaks to him from the heavens and he says, Abraham, Abraham. Glory to God. Huh. You ever been in situations and circumstances? Kind of like what my wife went through this week. And you're just waiting to hear the voice of God. You're walking by faith and you're not, no feelings whatsoever. Oh, I know you're so close to God, you don't ever get there, but I do. And you're thinking, God, everything just seems like it's falling apart. I've been with y'all when y'all were there, I know. God, what's happening? What's going on? I can't hear from you, I can't hear anything. But then, no glory be to God. Hmm. You hear that voice down in your heart and it says, Hey, you know me. You know I'm still God. You know I've not forgot you. I know you're upon the mountain. I know you're serving me. And best of all, child, you know me. And you just feel that sweet spirit of God after such a dry spell come in your heart and come in your life. And you know that God's got it. Oh, you don't see the problem dissolve all at once. You don't see everything change all at once. But the Spirit of God is confirmed in your heart because He spoke to you. And He said, Abraham, Abraham, do thy son no harm. When Abraham heard the voice of God, you see, when we hear the voice of God, 
when we're listening for the voice of God and we hear the voice of God, we see more clearly. I believe you read it. You believe it however you want. I believe that that ram was already caught in the thicket. Come on. I believe it was already there. And when God spoke to Abraham and he said, Abraham, Abraham, do thy son no harm. I know now that you believe in me. And Abraham looks. You see, when I hear from God, I, I'm expecting... My, 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 my. Brother Junior, when the voice of God speaks to my heart, I start expecting... I start looking and believing. God, right there it is. And he turned. He was expecting for something to be there. Believing that God had made a way. And he turned and there's that ram. No telling how many times before it ate from that thicket. Never got hung up. But it was hung up. God provided the lamb. Aren't you glad God provided the lamb for us? Aren't you glad that it's not by works of righteousness? We talked about it. I'm going to close. We talked about it in Sunday school class this morning. We talked about what a great Savior we have. And I'm so glad that He didn't leave it up to me. It's not of works. I'd mess it up. Oh, I know you'd do perfect. But I'd mess it up if it was left up to me. I'd make a terrible, horrible mess of things. I couldn't get it just exactly right. But he got it just exactly right. Glory to God. Because David, all I've got to do is come to the foot of the cross. By faith, believing. And there at the foot of the cross is level ground. The rich man stands no higher than me. Abraham, Isaac, David, none of them stand any higher than me. When I come to the foot of the cross, Brother Brandon, I come expecting and looking and knowing that I'm his child, that I'm his son, that maybe the daughter. I know that God is there to hear and to answer my prayers. Father, I thank you this morning. I thank you for your word. Your word is so powerful. It is so true. It is yea, it is everlasting. We can stand upon it. I'm glad this morning, God, that I know you. And I know what a loving, mighty, holy, righteous, wonderful God you are. Best of all, I'm glad, Lord, that you know me. Lord, look down right now, God. We, 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 we sat here this morning as a congregation. We know we're open before you. Nothing's hid. Nothing's hid. We're open before you. Look down into the very depths of our soul. And know, God, that we love you. God, that my faith is in you and your cross and that alone. I want us to stand for just a moment. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost in this house. I know the hour is getting long. And I'm not going to linger. Thank you, Jesus. There could be one here this morning, young person, older person, that doesn't know the Lord Jesus Christ. As your Lord and Savior, you can't stand and say, I know Him. I know Him as my Savior. I know Him for salvation. The altar's open this morning that you might know Him. closing this morning, I want us to all that will and can come very quickly. I'm not going to hold very long around this altar.